Welcome to Iris Insights, the channel for Iris app development using Swift UI and Swift. The Iris keychain is a secure and encrypted storage mechanism provided by Apple to store sensitive user data, such as passwords, authentication tokens, and other confidential information. It ensures that this data remains protected even if the app is uninstalled or the device is restarted. In this tutorial, we will explore how to utilize the iOS keychain within a Swift UI app. We will learn how to store and retrieve data securely, ensuring the user information remains confidential and safeguarded against unauthorized users or access. By the end of this tutorial, you will have a foundational understanding of integrating iOS keychain into your Swift UI projects to enhance data security and user privacy. This is the application that we will be building. It enables the user to log in. So to log into the application, for the moment, we just type in test at test.com. We can always change this later. And because the password is stored in the keychain, we don't need to we don't need to enter the password again. As soon as we click on enter, the password is retrieved from the keychain securely. Let's encrypt it. And then we click on the login button. And then when we click on the login, it enables the user to access the onboarding screens. So the onboarding screen is what is protected via the login page. Without logging in, Correctly, you're unable to access the onboard screen. So this is the application that we will be creating in this tutorial, just to demonstrate how to secure a page or a service within your application. The first thing we need to do is create a user struct to hold the username, email and password. So to do that, we just right click and then we click on new file and click on Swift file, click on next and save the file as user and then click on create. And then now type in struct user let email string and let password string and now the next thing we need to do is to create a user manager class. If we want to, we can do it in the same user struct or we can separate it. But just do it in another class, in, in another file. So just create another file. Right click by clicking on the control key CTRL and click on new file. user manager, the name of the class, and click on create. Class, user manager, static, let shared, user manager. This creates a shared singleton instance of user manager. And 
and let's type in private var users user user email let's give it the email which is test at test dot com password test and then create another user 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 two at example.com and then put a password to type in ABC and what this does it just creates an array of sample users with email and passwords you can also add more if you want to and then I think there's something missing What's missing on it? Users, user email. Oh, I've got the comma. The comma should be there to separate each record within the array. But really, the users should be coming from an API really, really it shouldn't be hard coded or coming from a database somewhere even if the database is on the device it shouldn't really be hard coded but this is just to show for example function is valid user email string password string bool return users contain users, I mean user in shift user dot email is equal to email and user dot password is equal to password so what this function does is it just checks to see if the user email and the user password that, it provide, that we provided just check to see if it's in the actual array and then if it's in the actual array that means the user email and user password is found and then the array will return true so the is valid user function returns true if it's found else it will return false if it's not found Just compile it just to make sure it's correct or that it compiles. And then the next thing we need to do is create the keychain manager class. So to do that we just create another like Swift file. Call it keychain manager and then we 
also have to import security because we're going to be using the keychain. So we're using the security framework. Next, we create our class. Class keychain manager. Static. Funk. Store credentials. Store credentials. In keychain. Username. String. Password. String. If. Let password. Data is equal to password data using dot utf8 on line 14 what this does it creates or converts the password string to a data type using UTF-8. Let query string any What we're doing here, we will be creating a query dictionary with keychain attributes for storing the passwords. So just type in k set class as string k set class internet internet password then comma then k set attributes I mean at Actually, account a string username the k should be lowercase k then k set value data a string password data so online sixteen that specifies the class of the keychain item as we're using the password internet class and then on line 17 that specifies the account or username to store and then so the account that we'll be storing is the person's email address and then on line 18, that specified the password to be stored, which is the actual password that we're typing in to be authentic, authenticated against.
Next thing we need to do is type in let status is equal to sec item add query as CF dictionary. Dot nil. On line 21, it attempts to store the password in the keychain using the query. That's why it's using the set item add method. If status is not error set success and print error storing credentials in keychain. Status. So um, this function that was done that stores the username and password to the keychain. The next function we need to do is to get the password from the keychain using the username. Create another function which is static function func get password from keychain user name string string if the username cannot be found it will return an optional so that the application doesn't crash that's why we put a question mark here on line 28 var password string let query string any k k set class a string k set Internet password and comma K set at tree account as string username K set return data a string kcf boolean true k sec match limit a string k sec Match limit one. So on line thirty three, I mean line thirty two, it creates 
a query dictionary with the keychain attributes for retrieving a password. It's a little bit similar to what we've done here on line 14. And then on line 33, it specifies the class of the keychain item. And then the next line specifies the account, username to search for. And then on line 35, it specifies the actual password. The data should be returned. On line 36, it specifies that only one matching item would be returned. So now we have to create another variable to store the results. Results, any objects. Let status equals set item copy copy matching query as see dictionary CF dictionaries is a Objective C data type. We see CF, it's always obje Objective C data type that we're using within Swift UI or within Swift. Ampersand results, so just pass it by reference. Or as a pointer. And then what we need to do next is so this attempts to retrieve the password from the keychain using the query. And now we'll check to see if the password was found. Type in if status equals error set success let data equals results as data and what this line does on line 43 if the retrieval is successful and the result is a data object convert it to a string that's what we're going to do now. So password equals string data data encoding UTF-8 and then the next thing we do is return the actual password to the user that was retrieved or fetched from the keychain. I just compile it now. So next week we'll be implementing the UI using Swift UI so that the user can enter their username and password using text fields and then also implement the onboarding functionality as well. It will display a message in white to say that it's incorrect but if the credentials are correct then it won't display a message and the color will be clear.
the next thing we need to do is add our password field which is a secure field secure field password text dollar sign password just to bind what we've entered to the text field dot text field style rounded border text dot background rounded rectangle corner radius corner radius is 10 dot foreground color so what we can do here we can just copy and paste what we've done previously because a lot of it is similar just copy line 49 and then just paste it here Is login attempted and not is valid credentials? Yeah, so that's all similar to the previous one. Next thing we need to do is create a toggle that allows the user to store their credentials in the keychain or not so a toggle is like a switch so just type in hstack text store credentials dot foreground color dot white dot frame max width dot infinity alignment dot leading so what this will do it will align the switch to the left toggle is on dollar sign should store credentials dot toggle style switch toggle style color scheme And then on line 66 or 67, just add a padding 
dot horizontal twenty the next thing we need to do is create our login button so just type in button dot action is logged in attempted is true is logged in is equal to is valid credentials so what line 71 does depending on what's returned within is credential is valid credentials if it's true at the boolean value that means logged in is true or if false was returned from the is valid credentials function that means it's logged in is false If is logged in and should store credentials, keychain keychain manager dot store credentials in keychain. So we just pass our email, which is our username, and we just pass our password. And then the next thing we need to do is add a label for the actual login button so to do that on line 76 just type this open bracket let's type text login give it some style foreground color white dot frame width 200 height is 2 oh no, height is 50 background color color scheme Corner radius is ten. For the padding is top and twenty. And now the next thing we will do is display a message if the login was successful or not. Just type in is login, I mean is logged in text logged in successfully dot foreground color white dot font headline dot padding top and 10 Next thing we need to do is create an else statement. So the else statement purpose is for if the login was incorrect, it will display a message such as invalid email. 
or password. So just type in else if. Text invalid email or password. So what we can do is just copy what we've done previously for the successful login, just copy the styles. And then I guess so uh, this needs to be corrected a little bit. It was originally like this. So there's an error somewhere. So if I delete this. And delete this as well. And then delete one of these brackets that shouldn't be there. And then now we can continue with the conditional statement else if. Is logged in attempted and not is valid credentials? So, what this will do displays an error message if logged in attempted with invalid credentials, it will display a message which is similar to the successful one. But, but the message will say invalid email or password. So just type in invalid email or password. And then the next thing we need to do is add a spacer to push the content up to the top a little bit and then we just apply some padding to the whole content And then the next thing we need to do is just add, um, yeah, that's it. Let's run it and see if it works or not. Seems like it's working. So the username details, where's the user name detail? Yeah, so the user, the credential that we're using against the array to do an actual login is test at test.com, which is the email address and the password is test. And we can also use user2 at example.com and the password is abc. So I'm just gonna, um, Copy this email address, which is the username, and paste it in here. Does it allow me to paste? Paste it there. And then for the password, just type test. Store it in the keychain. When I click on login, you, sh you should see like a successful message logged in successfully. So now what I will do to show that it's been stored in the keychain, 
I will delete the password or rerun it. Just a better test. Rerun the application and I want to type the password in. I just will type in the username which is test at test.com. So test at test.com and then when I click on the enter key or if I just navigate to the password field you'll see that the passwords will be retrieved automatically from the keychain based on this user name which is test at test.com as you can see the password was retrieved from the keychain I didn't type it in and then click on click in login and then you see the same message logged in successfully but if I type in an incorrect password for example, that password is in the array. Click on login. As you can see, invalid, invalid email or password. So that password was not found in the keychain. So next week, we will complete this tutorial by adding onboarding, some onboarding pages, because the purpose of this keychain example is to show how the keychain can protect another page from being displayed. So that's what we will do next week. Creating the onboarding screens. Because now the user can log in securely, they will have access to the other screens, which includes these screens. Get started, and then they can swipe and see the next screen, and then the last screen. So this is what we're doing in this part of the tutorial. So now enter into the content view. Last week we forgot to enter our logo into the assets. So we do that now because at the moment when we run the application you don't see the logo on the login screen which I'll show you now. It's just loading at the moment. As you see the logo should be here. So to add the logo, you can use any logo you want. I'll just use the logo in my folders. So I'll just use this logo or image and then I just rename it as logo. And then I just move it over to the assets. So open up the assets and then I just drag it I did it again. I just drag it to the assets folder and now when I run the application the logo will be within the application on the login screen. As you can see it's got the same name here which is called logo and the same name here is called logo. So I run it now. Think it's loaded. Oh, it's on another screen. Click the screen. Uh, let me do that again. As you can see, the logo is now displayed here at the top of the screen. So now we will continue with the onboarding page.
So the first thing we need to do is within the content view online online um, 104 now 105 we need to enter the following which is background destination admin view is active dollar sign is logged in so what that does is that when it's logged in is true the admin view will be displayed so it will be like navigated to dot opacity zero dot frame width zero and height is zero so now we need to create our admin view which is a swift UI view just select swift UI Give it a name of admin view. And then the next thing we need to do is within the admin view, we need to delete. Yeah, we just need to delete the preview and then create the state variable at state private bar current page index equals zero and the purpose of that variable is to track the state of the current onboarding page index as we saw earlier it went to page from page 1 to page 2 to page 3 so the index of page 1 would be 0 and page 2 would be 1 and page 3 would be 2 given the indexes and next on line 14 we add a Z stack color black edges ignore safe area so what that does it just sets the background of black so the whole screen will be black V stack Spacer Tab View Selection 
dollar sign current page index and the purpose of the tab view is to enable the onboarding pages to be like swipeable so we can swipe it using our finger loop I mean for each for each loop zero dot dot less than three ID backslash self indexing so what this will do it will loop through the range of onboarding pages using a for each loop onboard onboarding page view so let's create that function now it's called onboarding page view So to do that, um, it's best to create it as a view. Let's create it as a view, the onboarding page view. So let's create another Swift UI view. And then call the view onboarding page view. Type in index is int. And then within the body, delete the text field. Also delete the preview and then the next thing we need to do is type in spacer image onboarding index plus one those images we need to drag in into the assets folder so let's do that now so with the images I'm using these images here which is one PNG two PNG three PNG but we need to change the file names to onboarding so this one will be called onboarding underscore one and this one onboarding underscore two and this one onboarding underscore three and then Using those images, we need to drag them to the assets again. So just select them and drag them into the assets folder. And now the next thing we need to do is go back to the onboarding page view. And then on line 17, just type dot resize, resizable, dot scale to fit, dot frame, height 300, text, step.
index plus one. So that will say, I mean, show step one, step two, step three for each of the onboarding screens and images. Dot font title dot font weight bold dot padding dot top twenty text read part index plus one of the user guide dot multi line text alignment dot center dot padding horizontal forty dot padding top 10 and then another spacer and then a tag with the index and the purpose of the tag on line 33 is to assign a, a unique tag to identify the view in the tab view. On line 26, there should be a space between the plus sign and the one. And um, I think we missed out something else. Yeah, there should be a V stack on line 13, 14. And let's compile it just to see what happens. So we need to complete the admin view. There's a few things missing. So go back into the admin view. And I mean the content view, not the admin view. Go back into the content view and on line 106 there's a little error that we need to fix. Oh, because we missed out navigation link. That should be a navigation link. So let's compile it now and see if there's any more errors. There's another error. That's within the content view. So we need to do something else. Navigation view. Um, you're just looking for the error at the moment. I think it's. Oh, that's what it is. Background on line 106 should have an open bracket there. And on line 109, there should be a closing bracket there as well. And the next thing we need to do is, oh yeah, let's set the target to 
iOS 14 to get rid of the error. So just set it to iOS 14 to get rid of that depreciation warning message. Let's compile it now. Might need to give it a clean build, that might do it, get rid of that warning message. Yeah, yeah that one works. So back to the content view. Seems like the content view is now done. Yeah, the content view is done now. So now we need to go back to the admin view. Within the admin view, online 22, enter the following, onboarding, onboarding page view index and then pass in the index. So the index is the actual page that will be displayed when the user swipes. And then on line 25 just enter the following tab view style page tab view style Open bracket index display mode the always and what that does it applies the page table view style to create a swipeable page with little dots or little circles. Let's type in index, view style, page, index view style, dot background, display mode, dot always. And then the next thing we need to do is add a button. So just type in button action and then for the text of the buttons just type the following get started dot font dot headline dot foreground color dot white dot frame width 200 and height 50 dot background color dot blue dot corner radius 10 dot padding top 20 and then on line 38 or after line 38 just type in spacer and the purpose of the spacer is to push the content to the bottom center vertically it doesn't like background but the background 
color. Let's try the color. Color dot blue. And then the next thing we need to do is just add a little bit of padding to the entire V stack. That's what that does. And then finally, we just set the foreground color to color that white. And now we should be able to run it. Just compiling at the moment. Still running? I was trying to run anyway. Or is it the simulator that's a bit slow? Doesn't seem like it's loading. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's loaded now. So I just move it over here so you can see it. Just move it there. So if I type in my password. The simulator is really slow. Test at test.com. And I mean, the username and the password is test. The password was retrieved from the keychain. Click on login. And now it should be logging us in. And then now we can just swipe to the next onboarding page. Or you can use the little dots here on the page view. And then you can navigate back to the login view. But really, in the professional application, the onboarding information should be coming from a web API or a separate database server somewhere on the cloud. It shouldn't really be hard coded into the application. So that's the tutorial that demonstrates how to use the keychain. So the iOS keychain is a vital tool for security and storing sensitive user data. And it helps to use it as it enhances the app and the security and privacy of the application. Thank you for joining us. If you found this tutorial helpful, please comment, like and subscribe. See you next week.